Um, with regard to this question, there are well, a lot of um, advances in scientifically uh, that has tackled this question, basically because we had uh, cases that we have noticed that the endometrial thickness is not thickening. So the first question is to say how thick is thick. So is six millimeter okay? Is seven millimeter okay? Is five millimeter okay? So we have two things to consider is the thickness and the quality. So the quality of the uterus when we have like this triple lining, we say, oh, it's a good quality lining. So is it the quality or the actual quantity or the thickness? So this is one thing to address. I don't think like uh, uh, anyone would uh, argue that seven millimeters arbitrary is the aim for us. Like if we have anything seven millimeter or more, that's that's what we aim for, like really. Uh, however, any six and a half, six millimeter that we see with a good quality as well, uh, endometrium is as good as just thick endometrium. So to find uh, like a cancellation uh, of an embryo transfer just because it's little uh, 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 thinner than the arbitrary uh, line of seven millimeter is not sort of, um, I haven't seen it a lot. We go for it and then we have pregnancies out of it and there are lots of papers to have uh, to prove that the evidence is there that yes we go ahead with the uh, transfer now if it is a frozen sold embryo transfer a frozen sold embryo transfer especially an egg donation or whatever and there is like uh, 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 I would say travel involved and all this stuff uh, we are guided by two things as well, by the blood test. We can do like uh, an estrogen level to see if there is any element like uh, does it match with the actual uh, figure because don't forget that um, there is some intersonographic like uh, difference between one uh, doctor and the other. However, usually it shouldn't be like statistically significant. So that's one uh, thing to consider. Uh, the second whether we have to discuss uh, canceling this cycle and then repeating again. It's easier to do it on a frozen salt cycle because you are going to be on just tablets which are like thickening. Why? This is easy to increase, to manipulate, to modulate, to give you like maybe more estrogens, like you can uh, uh, from your experience, you know that uh, a lot of people like having uh, just tablets, maybe two, three times a day. We can increase it up to four times a day. We can add like even vaginal uh, uh, form of, uh, of supplementation. And we be guided also by the blood test. And if we are heading towards like increasing slowly the uh, thickness, then we are in the right direction and then we go ahead. However, despite these simple measures, I would say to increase the estrogen uh, level in a frozen sort embryo transfer, if it doesn't work, then we might need to maybe cancel this cycle and then we re restart again. It's different than the fresh. The fresh is a little bit um, peculiar because you don't have the facility to increase your lining by giving like more estrogen. Okay. So, uh, what do we do then? We have to see the background. Is there a background of Asherman syndrome, for example? Is there like a, there was problems all through the follicular monitoring? Because don't forget that with the egg collection, we do a lot of scans and we do a, 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 a reporting on the endometrial thickness. Um, obviously, with the egg collection, your estrogen level goes sky high and in uh, having a sky high uh, levels of estrogen, it should lead to a, a rather like thick endometrium. However, any past history of adhesions, Ashermans, uh, uh, DNCs, uh, stuff like that, that has had an impact on the uh, endometrial thickness, this should be investigated separately before going ahead with 
uh, embryo transfer. Now, is there any things to, to help to improve? Yes. So some people tried the sildenafil, which is the Viagra, given vaginally to increase the uh, vascularity of the endometrium and increase, and lots of paper on the use of sildenafil to uh, increase the endometrial thickness and uh, successfully. Also, there is this uh, uh, neupogen or this uh, the colony uh, granulocyte uh, colony stimulating factor that has been used recently by a uh, few clinics as a way to improve uh, the uh, endometrial thickness. Uh, there are uh, studies, but obviously it is not uh, openly recommended. We cannot just use it as uh, routine. However, in a very, very special uh, uh, circumstances. Now there are uh, some uh, also uh, research uh, based on the PRP using the uh, platelet-rich plasma uh, into uh, directly into the cavity of uh, the lining in, uh, uh, in order to help to increase this endometrial uh, thickness. We're still awaiting the approval and to see if this is uh, something that we can recommend in the future. So there are a lot of uh, scientific advances in this kind of uh, category. Uh, we are awaiting all the evidence and there is, uh, I would say, a hope like, uh, to, to make this kind of problem uh, be a problem of the past. Like hopefully by all these advances, we are trying to uh, achieve a better understanding of what works and what doesn't work.